なんとてめえうんやろう地獄からの使者スパイダーマン Hello guys, this is the Gameplay, I'm Fabio Pisco, and today I'm really, really happy, I'm telling you, I'm really, really happy, I would punch myself in the face if I wasn't really happy, because this video took a shit a lot of time, but well, I'm really happy, seriously, to bring this video, because this is a, a really awaited video, for some people, it has months of waiting for this video, which is Windows Power Plans, in this case, Windows Balanced, versus Windows High Performance versus Ryzen Balanced versus Ryzen High Performance. If you never heard about the, the power plans, you just need to go into your control panel, go to the power options and you have there the several power plans. In this video I'll test several games at 1080p, 1440p and 4K obviously with Ryzen 5 3600 and the RX 5700 XT. So of course this may change a little if you are using for example an Intel CPU or an older generation Ryzen. I don't think that the results will change much, but they may. And well guys, without any further delay, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot this channel. Road to 50k subscribers and let's go to the benchmarks right before the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, where you can get a Windows 10 serial key for only $17. And by using my discount code, you get a 20% off discount, making it even less, $14. After the payment, you'll receive the serial key. And to activate it, just go to your Windows settings and introduce that same key. And voila, you have an activated system for only $14. So now, let's go. Today's first game is Rainbow Six Siege with its new 2020 benchmark using Ultra Settings and Vulkan API. As we can see here, the results are virtually the same with Ryzen 5 3600 overclocked to 4.1 GHz. Of course, we have some deviations, but those same deviations can be taken easily as a margin of error, so yeah, basically the same, being it at 1080p, 1440p or 4K. Interesting. The second game is The Division 2 using Ultra Settings and the X12. We see once again that the difference between those power plans is null and that the small deviations are within the margin of error once again. I admit that I was expecting a bit different results at least in the 1% lows, this of course due to the core parking for example, but that wasn't the case at all, sad. Once again we have virtually the same results with all power plans at 1080p, 1440p and 4K.
Now we have the vastly played Fortnite using high settings and the X11. In this game we do have some deviations also, but they can also be taken as margin of error. But if we look into them as factual performance, let's say, it is interesting that the Windows balanced mode has the highest results here. Not the high performance and even less the AMD's Ryzen profiles. It is strange, yeah of course, but it is also interesting. Now with another game that is vastly played and it is PUBG, also using high settings, we have once again the same boring results. Which means that once you overclock your CPU to the max power possible, the power plans stop mattering which is at least enlightening to a certain point where people don't need to worry much about them. Once again no changes in PUBG. Moving on. The last game tested is CSGO in the benchmark map using very low settings in order to achieve the highest results possible so we can see if there is a difference once we push the FPS to a more extreme level. Sadly, that wasn't the case. As for the 1% lows, the smokes on this map do stress the GPUs to an astonishing level which will never happen in a real game scenario, so let's focus on the average FPS instead. And well, the results are once again the same. I guess it is time to try something different. Now as you've seen the results were almost identical using all the power plans, Windows Balanced, Ryzen Balanced, Windows High Performance or Windows or Ryzen High Performance. The results were all virtually the same and all within the margin of error so it means that there is zero difference. But there is a thing. Power plans are mostly, are mostly to control, let's say, control the boost frequencies of the CPUs, control their power states, so maybe that's why the results didn't change because, well, I have a static overclock and the power plans serve to control the boosts of the CPU and the minimum power usage, the minimum frequency, the maximum one. So yeah, I thought of that and why not test some games with stock values also. Uh, stock voltage, stock frequency, stock everything using PVO, PVO, using PVO, Precision Boost Overdrive, uh, which is kind of a, an automatic overclocking, okay? Which comes with every motherboard uh, in a Ryzen system, okay? In almost every motherboard, not all, but almost every motherboard. And well, we also have a mystery power plan that some people asked. So, well, let's go to the benchmarks once again. Well, since we have lots of results in these final charts, I had to leave out the 4K results, which I guess won't be missed much. Now we finally have the stock results in the same charts as the overclocked ones. This, because like I said before, Windows Power Plans are supposed to control a bit more how the CPU boosts works. And since we had a static overclock, it was quite obvious we wouldn't be getting the same uh, I mean, we wouldn't be getting different results, of course. By the way, I also added the power plan from one Osmos or one Usmos, I don't really know how to, how to pronounce it, whatever, which is the creator of Ryzen Calculator. And follow the steps advised to the power plan and guess what? Yeah, the same so-called 
power plan is actually boosting around 50 to 75 megahertz less than the stock values with PBO, hence leading to a smaller result. Once again with PUBG, we all know that the replay feature is not that great, ok, so the more trustable results are the averages and not the 1% lows. As for those, we can see that using stock settings with PBO or manually overclocking leads to the exactly same results independently on the power plan used. If you still want to look into the 1% lows, well, all I can say is that in this game, it seems that somehow the balanced power plans have a bit higher values than the high performance ones, and that the One Osmos is once again a bit behind, due to having lower boost clocks of course. And well, that's it, let's move to the next game. The last retested game is Fortnite, and here the differences are finally more evident. We can see that once again the Ryzen balanced profile delivers better results than the Ryzen high performance mode. And the same happens to one Osmos power plans that constantly deliver us from 50 to 75 MHz less, which is translated in the results, which is basically less performance. Overall, we are still way over 100 FPS, so I guess these small differences shouldn't matter much, at least for me. Let's now go to the conclusion. So we've seen that the results are almost in, in almost every case scenario using stock settings, uh, PBO, no PBO, in this case for the One Osmos, I, I just say it One Osmos because I don't really know how to pronounce it, but One Osmos, One Osmos, Sorry, sorry man, sorry. Um, but well, just no PBO while using the One Osmos power plan because they advise to not use PBO. Um, the difference in results is minimal, at least in the games tested of course. Um, so I don't really think that people should, uh, should care much about, um, about the power plans, the Windows power plans, because they don't do much as can be seen. The only difference was in fact the, the One Osmos power plan that didn't boost uh, to such higher frequencies. PBO us usually put the, the CPU frequency at 4.2 GHz, 4.15. While for example that One Osmos power plan, the guy that made the Ryzen calculator, like I said before, boosted the frequency to let's say uh, 4.1, 4.125, 4.150 and well, it was not. It, it was a difference of 50 to 75 megahertz, which made a small difference, a small but noticeable, noticeable difference in the end. Uh, so less FPS for this power plan. But overall, everything is quite the same. So we're still having uh, FPS numbers over 100, over 200. So so I won't really make a big thing out of five or maybe 10 FPS in 400. It just doesn't make sense. And yeah guys, that's it. Uh, I know this was supposed to be something out of this world, but no, sorry for the results, but I don't control results because I don't fabricate results. I'm not saying that some, I'm not saying that some people fabricate, but I don't. Okay, so the results are what they are. Um, and in this case, they are boring. Hope you enjoyed the video guys, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video. Go to the comment section, leave a comment and tell me what you think about the results and what are your results in case you tested it, okay? Thanks a lot and see you in the next video.